Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a hadith reported by Abu Umam Al-Bahili that in one of these three surahs in the Quran, the grand name of Allah occurs. Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Ali Imran, and Surah Taha. I recited for you the beginning of Surah Taha uh, in our uh, Salat Al-Isha. In one of these, in these three surahs, the grand name of Allah, Ismullah Al-A'zam, it occurs. Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Ali Imran, and Surah Taha. You find something called Ismullah Al-A'zam. You will find it in these three surahs. In another narration in Tirmidhi, Anas ibn Malik narrated that once he was walking with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they passed by a man making dua. And the man said, Allahumma inni as'aluka, O oh Allah, I ask you, bi anna laka alhamdu, because all hamd belongs to you. La ilaha illa ant, al-mannan, badi'u samawati wal-ard, ya dal jalali wa ikrami ya hayu ya qayyum. These are all names of Allah. Before he went on, the Prophet ﷺ said to Anas ibn Malik, this man has made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his ismullah al azim with his grand name. That name which when you invoke it, Allah will give you what you want. And when you ask, Allah will respond to your plea. So once again, what did the man say? Allahumma inni as'aluka bi anna laka alhamdu la ilaha illa ant al-hannan al-mannan badi' as-samawati wal-ard ya dha al-jalali wal-ikrami ya hayya qayyum This was just the beginning. He didn't even ask yet. And before he asked, the Prophet said, this man has used ismullah al-azim. And yet a third hadith narrated by Burayda ibn al-Husayyib anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he heard a man say, Allahumma inni as'aluka annaka anta Allahu la ilaha illa ant al-ahad as-samad alladhi lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakun lahu kufuwan ahad once again he hasn't gone on to the actual dua this is the beginning the istiftah and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam remarked the same thing this man has used ismullah the grand name of Allah that when you use it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you what you want and when you make dua then Allah will listen to that dua so these three narrations, the first is in Ibn Majah, and the second is in Tirmidhi, and the third is in Tirmidhi. These three narrations, they mention the same concept, and that is something called Ismullah al azim Now I have spoken about the names of Allah, and I have briefly mentioned the concept of the grand name of Allah in previous khutbas and lectures many years ago, even over here, and other lectures I've given. Today I just wanted to refresh and go into a little bit more detail regarding this concept of Ismullah al azim of the grand name of Allah Jalla Jalalu. Now, before we get to the grand name of Allah, a quick refresher. I, I mentioned this years ago here at Epic, and perhaps some of you were not there, that the concept of the names of Allah is a very important concept of Islamic theology. And many of us have a misunderstanding about this concept. And that misunderstanding is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only has 99 names. We think the list is finite. And this is, as Ibn Hajar comments, one of the biggest misunderstandings that the average Muslim has. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has more names than we can count. Allah is never limited. Nothing limits Allah. Allah's list of names is way beyond 99. Because if we were to say Allah only has 99, we're limiting Allah. And Allah is unlimited. Allah is al-ghani. Allah azza wa jal cannot be counted. So, when the Prophet ﷺ said, to Allah belong 99 names, he is not saying Allah only has 99. What he is saying, the full hadith says, to Allah belong 99 names such that whoever memorizes them will enter Jannah. Meaning, out of all of the names of Allah, there are 99 that are extra special. That's what the hadith means. It doesn't mean Allah only has 99 names. Rather, out of all of the names of Allah, how many names does Allah have? Infinite. How many do we know? We know maybe uh, a few hundred at max, and I've spoken about the controversy over the list of names. That's not the time to get into it right now because it is a complicated topic that uh, re requires a longer lecture. And I have given a lecture right here. The first year I came, I gave a number of lectures about the names of Allah, and I went over it, and I think some of them are online. But for our purposes, I just want to rehash and reiterate, Allah's names are unlimited. 
And the Quran and Sunnah has come with hundreds of adjectives and nouns that are describing the Jalal and the magnificence of Allah. And Allah has names and Allah has attributes. And the Quran mentions many direct nouns. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Malik, Al-Qudus, As-Salam, Al-Mu'min. However, the direct nouns, the direct actual names that are listed in the Quran do not reach 99. The actual names listed. As for the adjectives, they are many more than 100. There is a difference between a noun and an adjective, right? So the noun, Ar-Rahman. The adjective, Rahma, Rahmatullah. They're two different things. So the concept, Rahmatullah, these types of adjectives are in the hundreds. The actual nouns, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Malik, these are less than 70 in the Quran. They're not actually 99. We have to con convert some of the adjectives into nouns and also turn to the hadith as I, as I went over in the longer lecture. Now, for this lecture, we're talking about one of the names of Allah. What name? Ismullah al-A'zam, the grand name of Allah. So what does this mean? Realize, as with all such topics, it's not a simple answer. I wish I could say, oh, our scholar said this. No, our scholar said 15 opinions. We're going to go over some of them to give you an idea how complicated this is. So the first opinion basically said, look, this genre of a hadith, they're not found in Bukhari and Muslim, and the chains are not fully authentic, so you know the concept should not be believed in. And there are some scholars that said these traditions are not we are not authentic, so we should dismiss them. That is an opinion out there. Other scholars said, actually, we need to understand the names of Allah are all the same in terms of in terms of majesty. So we should not say any one name is better than the other. So what the Prophet is saying, whatever name you use, it becomes Ismullah al Azim. Ismullah al -Azam. So they had a different philosophy of understanding. And they said, if you look at these hadith, each dua is different. There's no one name that is common in all of them. So this indicates that there's not one name. Rather, what the Prophet is saying, the man has used the majestic names of Allah. And when you use the majestic names of Allah, Allah will answer you. So another group of scholars said, it's not one magical name. It's not one specific name. Rather, it is any name of Allah. And if you use any name of Allah in the proper manner, then Allah will respond and Allah will make your dua and listen to it, uh, will respond to your dua.